born into the um, family of Oluka Adesheba and Joe. In the little town of the Lauren. Um, it's um, the Midwest part of Nigeria. I was fortunate to be born into a middle class family. My dad couldn't afford it a lot, but he tried his best for his kids. So when I said I was going to do art, it was like, no, hell no. He wasn't going to sponsor that. Like, how was I going to do that? So, so I finished my undergrad and then I went to law school, finished as a lawyer and then worked in a bank briefly. Then I worked with National Human Rights Commission. And at some point, I just knew that this wasn't for me. So I did an exhibition in Germany, opened my eye a lot. And I'm like, oh God, I mean, I see people doing art for a living. And here am I struggling. The moment I left that and started practicing art, I didn't have a penny. But then that was the time I felt most alive in my life. You know, I felt like, you know, like a whole burden lifted over me and I felt free. Living in New York City has been a blessing because I moved to this city in 2013 and my work has been featured on Time, New York Times. That is crazy. New York does not sleep. Like every day, you're like, it's like, a, it's like a level of adrenaline that I have never seen before. People are literally on the move, making dope shit. So you cannot sit your ass down, sitting on thinking you're like, oh, you're the shit. You know, you just, you get out there, you see, you go to exhibitions, you see what your like colleagues are doing. You're like, you get on your toes, like, man, I gotta do something, I gotta do something, I gotta do something, you know? Brooklyn, for example, affords you the opportunity to be who you are, be Nigerian, and, you know, be accepted. Because, you know, Brooklyn, for example, is filled up with everybody from everywhere in the world. Like Ditmas Park, for example, is the most diverse neighborhood, technically in the whole of America. Because you have everybody from everywhere in the same neighborhood. So whether you like it or not, you're going to meet with somebody of very different background, different culture, and you have to learn to get along, you know. It's not a question of, you know, somebody dominating you know, or somebody more people there. So everybody comes from somewhere. So that's the beauty of New York. Everybody's from somewhere. Everybody has a backstory. This is like a month and a half old project. I've been painting, you can see one of my paintings there, and I've been painting, and I'm like, how do I get people to buy art and wear it about? And then I started painting on my guitars, and then started painting on shoes, and the response has been crazy. This is crazy, simple things like pens, simple things like paint markers, acrylic ink, all based markers, simple things like tips, because I work a lot with tips. It's so hard to find things, things like that in Nigeria. The thing is, I, I speak to a lot of my friends, you know, other artists, I'm like, you know, you can actually use this for your art. You know, we always chat on WhatsApp, you know, I found this, I found that, I found this, I send them pictures and they're just blown, like, oh my God, that's real cool, man. Please make sure you buy this, buy that. And I'm gonna think, okay, this is cool, there's a need. People are creative. People have the mindset. All they need is the tools. Something about hard work and something about the universe listens to people who like put in their effort and work. That's one thing I believe. It's been my motto. Like I just put in the work. I just keep doing the work. I don't get tired. I've never felt more black in my life than I than I have been since I lived in America. Because America is very, very color sensitive. First thing people look at you, they say, oh, the black guy. Or people tell me, oh, the black dude in the, in the blue top or the gray shirt. You know, it's, I, I just feel like my whole identity has been taken off, like calling me black. Like I'm Nigerian, I'm Yoruba, with a lot of heritage, you know? Like, and I'm like, when you just call me black, you just categorize me as African-American. And it's so hard to tell people that, okay, I'm not black, because then they say it becomes to something totally different. Like, okay, so what are you? <laughs> you know? 
and saying you're not black, they, people kind of take you out of context. Because I've had this argument with a lot of African Americans. It's like, so what are you? You're not black, so what are you saying you are? You know? Like, I'm, I'm not African American, I'm African. America really doesn't care. You're black. There's a lot of racial tension in America, and there's a lot of racial prejudice still going on in America. And as an artist, that's your voice. If you don't talk about it, then go to you. Because, I mean, an artist must reflect his environment. And, and this is the black reality. And I come in a black skin, fortunately. So I inherit everything that Martin Luther King talked about and Obama is talking about and every civil rights activist they're talking about. Our job is not to give up, it's to shed light, you know, on the wrongs and hopefully start a discussion. That's the ultimate goal of art, you know, to change thinking, to change behavior. And if you're able to eventually change, you know, young kids growing up don't have the same mentality of their parents, then we can start talking about the change. Yeah.